you know, I struggle with, uh, hell, everything. But some of those things are sleep, calm, focus, etc. You know who can help me? Beam. Beam is a functional wellness brand that makes products for sleep, calm, focus, recovery, hydration. Yep, that's right. White chocolate peppermint dream powder. Ooh, sounds good. They got a special cocoa going on right now. Yep, a nice dream powder cocoa you have before bed. Keeps you well, keeps you feeling great. Head to beamorganics.com slash Theo. That's B-E-A-M organics.com slash Theo for 40% off your first three months of any Beam subscription plus a free mug and frother. Today's episode is brought to you by Liquid Death. Happy holidays there to you and yours. Ah, oh, you can kind of feel the year. It's kind of exhaling a little. Oh, you know, and, and that's where I'm at. I'm hoping to be at. I can't tell if if I'm like if I'm about to be an ember or I'm about to be a fire. You know, it's that kind of year. You know, I want to slither into some comfort. That's what I want. I want to just just put my whole body in a damn slipper. You know, but at the same time, things amp up. You know, commercialism is. It's that time of year, really, commercialism amp up. You know, you say, everybody, get this. Get this deal. You need a deal, boy. Damn it, you need a deal. Don't you need a deal? Somebody stab you and give you a 15% off coupon for an EMT. Just, you know, I feel like you're just a voodoo doll for commercialism. They just get you, hear you. Don't you want this? Two for one, six for seven. Damn it. Don't you need a shiffer robe? Don't you need a wheelchair? Like I'm walking. Who cares? Dang it. Buy it. It's just that time of year, you know, is you see somebody put a damn uh a 30% off coupon into a damn uh what's that like a hole for a body for dead for dead. Into a somebody dead, they put a casket or whatever. Somebody put a damn thirty percent off into a casket. Like what? That dude's dead. That dude's a hundred. He's a hundred percent off, and he he's a hundred percent off of life. And you trying to hit him with that thirty percent? Come on, nah. Come on. So, is you know, here we are. Um, let's start off with a, uh, with a phone call. I'm grateful to be here with you. Hey, Theo, what's going on? Um, I've called him once before. My name is Will. Um, I just wanted to apologize, you know, right off the bat because, um, I did it. I wore a leather jacket to a Mexican restaurant last week. Um, yeah. I took my mom. Well, look, Will. <laughs> Willie, you don't wear a leather jacket to a Mexican restaurant. Who are you, brother, huh? Who are you, Abraham Lincoln, dude? Huh? Tony Hawk? Who are you? You don't do it. You took your mother. I don't care if you taking Little Red Riding out, riding lady. I don't care if you got, I don't care if you, if Goldilocks, if she's all ambient up and you got her out that bear trap house and you got her in there. Imagine somebody sees you're in there, okay? Somebody sees you, your mother, the fajita smoke goes by, right? It looks like the, uh, you know, the, uh, the peppers are on there just blowing Winston's. Just... And then they see you and your mom. You leather jacket it up. And the, to the, cause the perception is you some young buck, you some young drug buck that's hammering down, that's hammering cat on this old lady. You out here hammering cat out here and bringing her out to some, 
I'll tell you this, if God returns, when he returns, he will not, you will not, you might find, you might find him at a cantina, but he will not be wearing leather, and you know it. Ask your heart, and you know it. Oh, life is a salad, baby, and the Lord is my vinaigrette, son. Let's get into it, gang. This is Robert Finley. Get it while you can. That is Robert Finley. Get it while you can. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Uh, You know, I hope this is a time of year where, you know, where you can fill your cup up. You know, sometimes I I think my cup is a pitcher. And I'll keep pouring. Who wants a sip? You get a sip. You get a sip. You get a sip. Hell, I, I pour. I, I pour a plant. I pour a person. Who wants a cup? You know, and I and I and I and I forget that sometimes you know my cup's not even full. There's nothing even in, it. and I'm still out there, just drip dropping on people. And so I got to remember to take time to make sure that I'm doing things to keep my cup full. You know that I'm putting joy in my own in my own life, so I can so they have something to share, you know. And I got to be doing little thing. Maybe you got to pet a little uh, cat or something, you know, or bring up a damn uh, JPEG of a, a dolphin or something, or you know, or uh, you know, eat a blueberry or do something good like that. I'll even look. I'll look on the video. Sometimes soldiers coming home. And then they wheel out, you know, and they they, they they wheel the guy. The guy climbs out of a uh, like a fake uh, Easter basket at the uh, pep rally or whatever. And you're like, oh, Reginald's home or something. And the whole, you know, everybody's crying and shit. And the team suck. Usually they do that. That when the team is bad, they do that. See, we need some damn war daddies over here. And sometimes, you know, it's a couple war mommies out there. You see a couple. You know, if you see, you know, if you see a real long kiss and there's four, if there's four breasts and a kiss, baby, that's lesbianism, baby. And that's, you got to enjoy that when you get to see it. So, um, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, Some people don't celebrate Thanksgiving. I think it's Canadians mostly. Uh, I don't know who else, maybe. Canadians, they should celebrate. Y'all, dude, Canada's been shut down. You guys might as well start celebrating it. There's nothing else. You guys are so scared of COVID. Y'all don't even have, I think you took your doorknobs off. It's locks only in Canada. 
If you, you can't, if you, you got, they're, they're back to writing letters, stationary. The stationary market up in Canada has just skyrocketed. You see ships of ink going up there. Yes, they, you know, Canada, they, you, they're not even allowed to handshake. No hugging. Don't you, you'll see a, a married couple just staring at each other till one of them damn busts right out there. Or, you know, really, uh, sugars, you know, really drips out, you know, drips up their britches. And they brits dripping out there in Canada because they, the laws, they've gotten so COVID scared. They, they just, even the snowmen, no arms on them. No arms. They don't want it. Nobody's touching. They're not doing none of that. None of that up in Canada. What else? Oh, the Turkey Farmer episode. If you didn't get a chance to check that out, check it out. You know, it's nice to learn about the birds that uh that really are the mascot of Thanksgiving. You know, it's really the the Baltimore Raven of Thanksgiving is the turkey. And a turkey, baby, that's God's tit right there, son. That thing. Mm. You know if you put two hands on a turkey, you feel long enough, somebody going Somebody finding some milk. You could tell by lo looking at a turkey that they, the, that bird's hiding that leche, baby. You know that by that bird. Whoo, that's ninety eight degrees. That thing's hiding that nick leche. You know what I'm saying? Um, we got some great calls, man. This tree is close as hell, dude. I feel like I'm in like these things are from Vietnam or something. I keep hitting it, sorry. These things might be listening to me. Are your trees listening to you? Are, do you, are your artificial plants listening to you? I'm Alex Jones. I'm Alex. Are you? Have you had your artificial palms checked for uh, uh, listening for ears? It never ends. Let's get into some calls that came in, man. Always grateful to have some calls. The hotline is always 985-664-9503. Here we go. Just on my way home from work, man. I'm a bartender mixing up drinks, probably spilling most of them. But anyway, I have a thought, kind of like a question for you, man. Uh, there's a lot of performing characters, you know, like in the performance mm -hmm. industry. Which one out of these two do you think houses more pedophiles? Wow. Clowns or magicians? Because mm. hear me out, man. Those clowns, they're coming to your kid's party folding balloons and shit, looking at stuff. You don't, you don't know what he's doing. But that magician? Yeah. Yeah, and thank you for uh, – sorry to cut you off, man, but I, but I got these buttons here. and um, It's a good question, and it's an age-old question. You know, it's a question that you, you know, you see old men talk. This is something that's been talked about for a long time. Cl well, first of all, let's look at clowns. Imagine putting lipstick on your mouth. Sometimes you see a man, you know, your boy Terry or whatever, and he does a lipstick. It's fine. You know, he says he was in a fire or whatever, and that's why he got to do it. Everybody knows Terry never, <laughs> Terry never been in a fire. You know, Terry, Terry never been in a fire, Terry. Bitch, you never been in a fire. So just be, if you want a woman out a little or you want to, you know, you want a small stick on them lips, if you want to do, do, do what you want to do, then do that. But now imagine a man, instead of just doing a lipstick, he puts a lipstick on his whole face. That's a clown. Okay? That's a clown, guys. And that's that's where it's alarming. You know, uh, when I was young, I don't know if you could even legally be a clown when I was young. You'd see them get pulled over all the time. they pull a dude over. We had a guy bus. He was, I think, people thought he just had allergies or seasonal allergies and, uh, and that he was kind of, 
you know, little, I don't want to say, they used to call it fat, but he was, you know, kind of gristled out. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, he was damn the Lord's love seat. You know what I'm saying? Boy, he had a little lever on his hip. You pull on it, his legs would go straight. You know what I'm saying? He was that little comfort bear. And he uh, he was clown. He was clown. And he would get pulled over. And I remember one time they pulled him over and there was they just pulled him over for being clown. And the cops are trying to talk to him and nobody, you know, it's still kind of vague uh, what the crime was. And then he took his own clothes off and he had his he had more clothes painted under his clothes. So he had and now he's naked. Now it's a crime. And then I think the one dude he tried to climb up a uh, invisible ladder like a mime or whatever. You know, he's shape shit. You know, he's not shape shifting, but he's. You know, wishing he was a, a, you know, which is basically the ninja of clowns. A mime is just a damn ninja clown. That's all that is, bro. A mime is just a clown that, you know, that got its associates, really. So he's trying to climb an invisible ladder and the cops beat him down. Um, but anyway, what was I talking about? But I think a, a, a clown is just somebody I think that's afraid to ask you to touch their wiener. That's all it is. I think it's somebody that's afraid to say, hey, daddy got that little spice entree. You feel me? Because some clown, you see the wiener, it's got paint on it. That thing, it's like, what's even going on here? You can't even, everything's hiding. So the craziest is a female clown. When you see a female clown, that's when I, what? Why, what ha did you see, was you at a pizza party and somebody molested you or something, you know, like what, you know what I'm saying, like how did you, that's the weirdest one, did somebody like touch your titty at a comic con or something, how, why are you a clown, madam, why, I'm not saying you can't be, you can be, but that's the one that gets me, female clown gets me. But magician, magician, magician is just, magician is the one you don't, you know, you don't even know you got touched by him. You wake up and you shook in the head and you shook in the crotch. And you, 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 you know, you don't, you, and all you did the night before, you watched a couple card tricks and now you molested. Like, it's just a lot, uh. And I'm sorry, I know some of this can be triggering, and maybe I shouldn't answer this question, especially on Thanksgiving. But, um, and look, a, a magician is really, that's the silk sheets of Satan, baby, because remember, silk sheets, they're on you, but you, don't, you can't exactly feel them. You ever get in your grandmother's bed? Grandparents have silk sheets because they freaks, bro. And if, they, if they're not freaks anymore, they want to remember. They want that freak textile on. You know what I'm saying? They, they want that spider spit all over their body. They want that silk. So you, a silk sheet, in a silk sheet, it can be on your body and you, you can't, it's there, but you can't fully feel it. It's like there, but not there. Is just it's like uh, is this keeping me warm? What is it? And then next thing you know, bam, you're molested, and that's a magician. It's a silk sheet of uh, of of Satan, really. I feel like so. If you had to have someone molest you, would you rather a, a clown or a, a magician, Riley Mal? <clears throat> I would say clown. Oh yeah. Why is that, bub? I mean, just look at him. Yeah. I guess, yeah, I guess you, you know, you'd rather, it's a more industrial look, I think. You know, it's more, in, it's definitely more of like a, it's more of, it feels a little more union. I feel like getting maybe molested by a clown. You know, 
Definitely a clown, huh? I don't know. Yeah? What, you, you second guessing or? Kinda. You're just not sure, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and look, and look, I, I'm sorry for even asking you to choose, man. It's, um, you know, it's Thanksgiving. I don't want you to get, uh, you know, I want you to be happy and, and, and joyous and free. And I don't want anybody touching you that you don't want them to, and no matter who they are or what their occupation is. Um, but anyway, how's it going? Riley Mao is here, the unbustable. Doing good. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? How's it going with the, um, you know, the sexuality and the the ejaculate and everything? Still the same. Oh, my man. That's what I'm talking about, son. I bet people get you to damn come cough on their plants in the spring just to keep the, uh, just to, I mean, you could be Mother Nature's little hit man. You could be out there just blooming things anywhere. I bet you walk across a yard and, uh, you know, and there's gladiolis under your feet. The unbustable. Dude, I, I, dude, I'll trade you for probably nine cartons of cigarettes in a, uh, in San Quentin right now, I bet. You know? Yeah. I bet Elton, <laughs> Elton John, we could sell you for half a million, Elton John. You'd be a little Christmas ham for him on his dinner table over there. But how's it been, man? You been doing well? Yeah. Yeah? What's new in your world? Uh, nothing much. Trying to find a girlfriend. Oh, really? Yeah. And so with being uh, in the podcasting universe some, are you getting a lot of DMs from ladies? What's going on? Mostly from guys. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. And guys looking for sex? No. Oh, just friendly men? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And what? But no, but not a lot of women, huh? No. Only a very few. Oh, I feel you there, dude. Damn. I feel you there. It's uh, it's tough. I mean, it's you know, one will come along, I think. But um, do you, so? Do you ever get that nocturnal kind of bust? Do you ever wake up in the morning, you just check your pants and just look for a prize or anything? I mean, is there? Are you just still wound up, huh? Yeah. Man. God, I almost want to. Man, you got to live stream it, man. You got to live stream when you live stream you know what i'm saying baby you got to really show that off uh what else you got holiday plans uh yeah i'm going back to california oh cool man you guys having a little get together or what yeah yeah just family dinner oh sweet you guys celebrate thanksgiving we do oh that's good man welcome brother i'm glad you're doing well you look healthy Thank temperature you. good and everything yeah oh that's good man that's good Oh, you know, life hits us different. Uh, will you stay here? Will you, will you hang out for a little while, Riley? Yeah. Awesome, man. Thank you, man. And what I'm saying is this. We got a beautiful call that came in, and so let's get to it right now. Gang, baby. What's going on? Uh, my name is Dalton. Uh, I've been listening to the show off and on for a while now. Just want to say I love everything you do, gang, gang. But uh, a couple of Gang, baby. Onward. Sorry to interrupt you. But uh, a couple of episodes ago, I think it was on the Swipe Society episode, you mentioned something about your uncle, or I forget who, got hit by a train. And oh, yeah. Uh, my mom's brother got hit by a train. I didn't know him. He was dead. I, was, I wasn't dead. I wasn't alive yet. So I was before, you know. I guess I was dead. I was, you know, I just wasn't alive. So you're not alive when you die. And then you, you're, I guess, I don't know if it's dead. I don't know what I was. I wasn't, I, I wasn't on earth. And he was already on earth. And then he got hit by a train. He was alcoholic. He was alcoholic and he got hit by a train. And that's all I know. Oh, and he was um, brunette. Let's hear more. He died and... I can relate because uh, when I was in high school, it was probably like 10 years ago, I was actually hit by a train uh, on the way to school. I was walking to school, and Damn. I lived. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if you want me to – I can send you – Damn, send me what, dog? 
You gonna send me some arms, son? I'm just joking, man. Wow! That industrial alarm clock, baby, that train. Gang, baby, and you hitting the hotline? We got miracles on the hotline. Let's play more. Go on, Dalton. An article, link to the article, article or whatever, but... It was a life-changing moment for me. Like, basically, I survived this accident. And if I could go back, honestly, I wouldn't change a thing. I would probably get, you know, I wouldn't change. I would probably, you know, still get hit by the train. <laughs> it was such a life-changing moment for me. Yeah. That's what's up, baby. I'm upstairs. That's who we are, dog. We are people that get hit by trains and say, run it back, fam. We out here, dog. God. Can you believe? It's a miracle, Riley, isn't it? Yeah. This man, been, he, said, he said, bring it back. Let's hear more. That... It was so. It was probably the most important thing to happen to me in my life. It really put things into perspective. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that thought. Gang, baby, he want he he said, "Bring it back, train, two trains, let's run it back." That's powerful, man. Cause that it's like. I, I got to listen to this one. It's like something happens to you and it's really rough. It's really bad. And you say that was the greatest experience. Let's hear this again. This accident and it was a life changing moment for me. Like basically I survived this accident. And if I could go back, honestly, I wouldn't change a thing. I would probably get you know i wouldn't change i Say would it. probably you know still get hit by yeah! such a life-changing moment for me let's go that it was so it was probably the most important thing let's. to happen to me in my that's life that's what's up we getting hit by trains baby man it's just like that's that look man thank you for calling don't i just you know, I'm sitting here complaining about this in my life and this is tough for me and this thing, you know, and this is hard and I have this. And we got a man out here who's getting hit by train and says, hey, let's make it trains, baby. Who's saying, let's run it back, fam. Line up again, Satan. With your big dirty machine. Line up again, Gerald Ford or whatever that guy's name is. Who, you know, the train guy, Larry Amtrak, whoever it is, line it up. And let's do it again, baby, because I'll go one more time. That's powerful. That's powerful, man. I mean, you know, do you feel, do you feel the, you feel, I'm lifted up here, Riley. I'm lifted up, man, because, you know, it's like, there's just so much to be learned through pain and to get through it and say, let's do it again. I want more to look your pain in the eyes and say, I want more because I'm going to be, I'm going to be toughened up. I started off as a damn soft shell crab. I'm going to finish out as a turtle, baby. I'm going to be toughened up. Wow. You got me lifted, Dalton. That's powerful, baby. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Thank you for the call. You uh, what else? You get pubic hair, Riley Mal? You get? How's your body doing overall? It's doing good. Okay. And do you get? Does it get out of control, or it's manageable for you? It's in a manageable state. Uh, it's pretty manageable. Okay, that's beautiful, dude. Could definitely sell you on the market, baby. I get a VPN to hide this browser, boy. I get half a million for you somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Probably sell you back to in your own country. I'll sell you back to your own people, to be honest with you. Praise God, brother. Good to see you today, man. Thank you. Good to see you, man. And, uh, and God loves us, right? Yeah. That's awesome. 
always the best answer. Um, what are you thankful for, Riley? Uh, I can tell you I'm not thankful for uh, not having a girlfriend. Oh, really? You yeah. really want one, huh? Yeah. At some point. Yeah. yeah. And how is it... Um, and have you had a lot of dates or anything? Have you been doing dating? I just had a coffee date with someone. Oh, okay. Didn't, okay. Didn't end well. It didn't end well. Well, how did it start? Did you? Would you wear? Um, nice shirt, slacks. Mm. Cologne. Oh yeah, you went there with that scent, huh? I did. Dude, I, I'm sure you got the pheromones coming out of your body, son. You know, I bet you smelled like damn pure eject, baby. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I bet a damn dude. I bet a fucking uh, a strong dog would lick the skin right off your bones, baby. You know what I'm saying, dog? Damn. My God, I bet. You, I mean, you could cry into a uh, you could cry into a woman, and 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 and, and she'd have twins, man. I think. Um, and 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 where'd y'all go? You guys went to coffee. Yep. Okay. And did you uh, did you meet her out front? Did you meet her inside? Um, I met her out front. Oh, okay. Uh, and w did you guys get there at the same time or? I was there first. You were there first waiting out front? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think sometimes that can be kind of, that's a Christian move, dog. Honestly, that's a hell of a Christian move. I respect it. It's a fucking old school, it's an old school move. Um, and so then you guys went inside and what happened? Uh, we talked. It was great. Um, I shouldn't say it didn't end well. It it ended well. Um, she just never texted me back. And you met her on the apps? I did. Okay. And were you, uh, man, I'm bummed out. What do you think? It, do you think it, do you really feel, here's a, here's a question. Do you really feel there was a connection or are you not sure? I wasn't sure. Okay. Because sometimes I'll put connection where there isn't really a connection. I want there to be one sometimes because I'm lonesome. And so I'll be like, let's see. And but sometimes there re, you know, there may not be one. But right. I'm not saying that's what happened with you. No, it did. Oh, it did happen. Mm -hmm. No. Oh. Yeah. And there you go. But you're still you're not giving up? No. You're still out there. Mm -hmm. And now can you do uh and you're saving your sex for marriage, right? Yeah. That's a marriage meal. Right. Wow. So you gotta get all the way to the altar before you can even get these, you know, get that puree out of you. Yeah, pretty much. God. God, baby. Oh. Man. And now what, I mean, so you could, now what if you're trapped in an avalanche or something? You have to get, would you guys have to just get married? You to do a, sir, you figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out somehow. Yeah. Yeah. So you keep a ring on you at all times. I mean, you must keep a ring in the damn glove box, huh? Pretty much. Riley Mouse smiling over there. Rare to see him. I have a feeling. Um, well, I'm sorry the date didn't work out. Uh, and uh, we got to get more women to teach up. Now, how, how far would it be from marriage to, from the di first date to marriage? How, 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 how quick are you willing to run that gamut? Uh, I would say anywhere between six months and a year. Okay. But in six months from meeting somebody, you, you're ready to hit the altar. If it seems right, yeah. If it seems right. And what size woman are you looking for? You got a height range on you? Not height. No. Um, I don't want someone that's like super thick. Okay. But I wouldn't be opposed. Okay. So you up to, you know, you up to a medium, medium, maybe a medium plus, but you're not looking for like a BBW or something no. they say like that. Right. Some lady that's really like in a food contest or nothing like that. Right. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah. Oh, well. You know, uh, they say when it happens, it happens. That's what they say. Exactly. But I bet you got that geyser on you, dog. Dang. You got that mold faithful, son. That thing's ready to that thing ready to put in some work, dog. Dang, boy. Oh. Oh, good to see you today. Um, let's get into some calls, man. First, I want to tell you about Upstart. What would you do if you didn't have high interest loans or credit card debt? What would you do, Riley, if you didn't have debt? I don't know. A lot of stuff. With Upstart, you can pay off your existing debt quickly and easily and start living your life. 
If you're carrying credit balance, credit card balance, credit balance month after month, it can feel like you're in a never-ending cycle of debt with no end in sight. Upstart is the fast, easy way to pay off that debt. It can be credit cards, high-interest loan, funding personal expenses. Over a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Boom. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash T-H-E-O. That's upstart.com slash Theo. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. That's upstart.com slash Theo. You know, it's that time of year where uh, a lot of men, you got that mistletoe on your body. You know what I'm talking about, God's mistletoe, that wiener. Because that thing, boy, you hide that, you, you hang that thing over a doorway during the holidays. Somebody gonna, somebody gonna fuck they ain't you know what i'm saying yeah well look i shouldn't have said that but anyway uh what i'm trying to tell you is manscaped if you have dry ashy skin you're in luck manscaped's new products include the ultra premium body wash you wash your body <laughs> some creep asked me that one time at a uh it was a, um what's that thing where you drive by you put the money in it and there's somebody in there the car wash Mm, it's like that, but no water. It's like a, it's by like a bridge or something. Fuck. The touchless car wash? Oh, nah, 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 nah. Anyway, if you're going to start using body wash, you got to make sure it's good for your skin. Yep, this has sea kelp extract in it. It's like being in the damn ocean, but you can do it at home. Manscaped, they've got it all. Tis the season. Trim up that mistletoe, that meaty, meaty mistletoe, huh? That long hitter, baby. If you can't find a woman, would you get your man, Riley? No. All right. There you go, boy. Be honest. Say it. That's okay. You're doing good. Um, I'm just telling you right now, get 20% off and support the podcast and free shipping. Go to manscaped.com slash Theo. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com slash Theo. Clean up that candy cane this year with Manscaped, huh? You got a lot of hair on your body? A little. Ooh, that's nice. All right. All right, let's get into some more calls that came in. I want to thank you guys. Uh, I'm, and then I, and I'll tell you a little bit more about just some of the cities, the tour. Um, I'm grateful for you. Thank you for being a part of my life. I mean that. I do not know where I'd be without you. Uh, we got this call that came in right here. Let's get into it. Hey, this is Maddie Camacho. Um Camacho. That's a... Uh, it's a Native American name, I believe. And um Yeah, thank you for calling. Sorry about sorry about everything that happened. And thanks for calling onward. I'm wondering if you know of any tour dates yet that are gonna be happening in twenty twenty two. I was thinking of getting my boyfriend a ticket for me and him to one of your shows as a Christmas gift. I thought that'd be like the best Christmas gift ever. Okay. Uh sorry. I, yes, I do think it is uh Oh, mommy, I shouldn't have impersonated you there. I, I, I didn't. I'm doing good. You're doing good. Very sweet of you to think of him. Oh. That'd be like the best Christmas gift ever because we love you, but oh. I just, I just not know if you have any dates yet. That you have yes. Uh, I don't have... I'll, I'm coming through Florida. I know that. Uh, Canada, I'll be coming up to in May. Uh, Florida will be in uh, February. Canada will be in, or maybe March and April is Canada. I think it's April and May. Uh, April, I'll be in Canada. Um, some other places, trying to be a little bit more in the southeast just because there's less restrictions at the moment. Uh, so handling things like that. Um, and where else will I be at? Uh, those will be, in the next two weeks, there'll be announcements. So there will be some options. I don't know if it'll be where you are. But next year, I'm going to come uh, to a lot of places. We're returning the rat, baby. Oh, and also uh, Coachella, California. That's December, I think, next Saturday. What's next Saturday, the date? Do you know, Rally Mount? I believe the 4th. Yeah, it's December 4th or 5th in Coachella, California. 
at the Spotlight 29 Casino. Those tickets are on sale uh, through Theovon.com uh, Theo slash tour. So thank you guys for the support there. Um, yeah, the tour. So let's get into the tour. So we got a tour bus that we leased. So that was really, you know, for me, it's really about just having, just, just taking the pressure off myself. Instead of trying to arrange like, you know, or work with my tour manager to arrange like a Sprinter van or this or that. Uh, this time we decided to get a tour bus. And it was exciting. You know, you sleep in there. So it's, you kind of like, uh, you get it gets a little hamster cagey. You know, you definitely, now I see why hamsters have a wheel in there. Because your blood, you get real coagulated. You just get real, you know, everybody's like on the same menstrual cycle or whatever, even if it's men. You know, everybody's just noses will start bleeding at the same time for no reason. It's just um, because we just had three men in there. It was myself, Ari Manis, who was the opener. uh, And then the, the, the bus driver, Bizzle Gibbons, uh, no, is the tour man. Bizzle Gibbons, and he's a Canuck, and uh, and then Mr. Gary was the the bus driver, and I grew up with a kid named Gary, so I'm used to being around Garys. And Garys, you got to get used to. It's it's easy though. Garys are usually pretty docile, you know, but you got to get used to them. Uh, and I didn't see the bus driver for the first four days. Because basically you get done with the show, you go to bed, and he comes on and drives at night. He's almost like, um, who's the person that gets in your dreams and makes you do or makes things happen? Riley, who is that? Do you know? I don't. Great. Uh, The guy that gets in your dreams, he like, oh, I'll see what I'm going to do here. Like a dream man. You look that up for me, do you mind? Yeah. By the way, do you have the password for the computer? What? Uh, <laughs> you don't have it? No. <laughs> Unbelievable. Never mind. Uh, we'll be fine, man. Uh, okay. I don't, what, what are we living in, people? How many trains have you been hit by, son? Where are we? This is the problem with society. This is why, you know. Glad to have you here, brother. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Riley. Um, all right, let's just keep it moving. Uh, oh, but yeah, so I never saw Gary. You get in there, you go to bed, you wake up. I got a little bit of nice, you know. You know, there was one time I had a little bit of interaction with a woman, you know, a little bit of sexual, if you will. Not full sexual, but definitely, you know, being around each other and seeing what was happening at a close range. A lot of close range, basically. So that was good to get involved in a little bit of close range and know I'm straight and know everything is chill. Always a good time. Um... But the nice thing, too, was sitting in, uh, and God bless that woman. And also, uh, the nice thing was sitting as the bus drove through the countryside, just sitting in the back. And you're looking out the window, and you're like, damn, okay, beautiful, beautiful. Let me look over here. Oh, fine as hell. And it's nature. It's not bitches, dog. It's nature. Because nature is all the bitches. If you really give a good look at it, nature is all the bitches, man. And I got my hand in my pants now and I'm taking it out. Okay, but here's some questions that came in from you guys um, just from the tour and stuff like that. So uh, let's get into a couple of them. Hey, Theo, man. This is Max. Uh, I'm out here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I'm a... Big Max, and Max is as much as you can have. So that's quite a that's quite a responsibility as a person. Onward, brother. Security, uh, 
guard and visitor experience uh, gallery guard at the Columbus Museum of Art here in the city. Uh, watch after that art. Oh, damn, baby. So you you guarding art. You that freaking Vincent Van Gangbanger, son. You out there, huh? You Banksy Siegel. You out there. You quick drawing McGraw, baby. You guarding art. Damn, boy. Keeping them betches off them etch sketches daddy. Let's go. Onward. Uh, this past weekend, I got to go to your show uh, over at the theater in here in Columbus. First time I got to see you. So, man, that was huge. I've always wanted to call you and just tell you this. This past weekend, I finally got to go see your show. I've been uh, listening to your podcast since 2018. And I love what you do. I really love you, man. Your inspiration wow. uh, to me, a lot of people. So, yeah, I just want to call and say thank you for a great show uh, this past weekend. I'm still thinking about it, how much fun I had. You were just a fantastic uh, comedian, fantastic <laughs> entertainer. And, uh, yeah, I love you, bro. All right, I just thought I'd let you know that. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks, man. That's nice of you to say it, dude. I, I appreciate it. I probably let that go on too long with you saying nice stuff, but. But thank you, man. I'm glad you had fun. Your voice just makes me sound excited. I'm excited because you're excited. You know, I'm glad that uh that we could that you could do that and feel some. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I really am. I'll say this: by the time that show got to Columbus, that thing was hot, dude. That second show in Columbus, I should have done 40 shows in Columbus, and we'll probably come back through. Um, some places, you know, we just. I've been having to mitigate the ele- the amount of shows I can do in cities because uh just my I've just been dealing with a lot of stress and stuff you know but um but you, but dude when I got off those two shows it was hot from where this tour started in St Louis when people were just you know there was some guy who was belt who couldn't stop belching in like the fourth row they kept his wife's like you know doing reverse CPR on him. He's breathing through his wife. Just some guy who just had just had too much meat. You know, some guy that was just over meated and he can't handle his own life and now his wife's tra- having to hold down his uh body air. You know, from that from those shows at the bar that where it was just louder, more drastic and then you get to Col- you get to whoo, whoo, all aboard, son. This train don't stop here anymore. I think that's an old song. I don't know if it is or not. Shit, I might have made that shit up. I might have never even heard that shit. You ever do that? You ever start singing a song? You don't even know if you ever fucking heard the song, baby. Gang. Um, But thank you, brother. You stay hot on that art, fam. Let's hear another call that came in right here, man. Uh, gang, gang. Hey, Theo, this is Alex from Maine. Uh, I, I saw you in Portland this past Tuesday with my girl. Uh, I was a guy wearing the shirt with bananas on it, that fruit shirt hitter. Uh, the show was awesome. You were so funny, man. Um, thank you, Alex. Uh, thank you for bringing your lady out and making the evening. It was a guy. If you've never been to Portland, Maine, it is amazing city. Amazing city. It, it, blew my mind that that's what was happening up there that that's what god put up there i thought it was a couple people up there you know what i'm saying freaking trying to you know use a crowbar to get in up in each other's clam holes you know what i'm saying a lot of people out there trying to use a damn shoehorn and trying to shoehorn their way into a little neck gang baby onward i was just curious did you end the show early because of the kind of loud possibly drunk people who kept yelling out there was a lady a few rows behind me who yelled out like your ass is hot or something and like people okay. laughed white lady probably off of it but then she did it a second time a few minutes later and you looked a little bothered um oh they want that gristle daddy um no no i didn't or i didn't um portland show let me think no we got off stage oh, oh no i remember we didn't end early I think we did about a 50-minute set, and then um, we did meet and greet. Or, you know, just, well, I was feeling pretty good. My energy was feeling good, and so we uh, got to meet some people. Uh, you know, just just met who was around. So I think that was pretty much it. I loved it there. 
I loved Portland that Tuesday night. You know, I have a special place in my uh, ticker, uh, in my heart, mi corazón, for Portland. You know, I used to, uh, I remember touching a girl's body when I was young up there, off of Islesboro's Island. And I don't know who, I think it's named after like Larry Islesboro's or something, I don't know. But, oh. Uh, I remember being in, a, in an abandoned summer home in an attic in Maine and touching some girl's body and, and a bat tried to attack me. Same time. And it's hard to play the fiddle when freaking Satan's trying to, you know, when he's sending one of his little hitmen at you. You know, when he's sending that little fucking dirt sparrow at you, dog. So, you know, when Voldemort's got that little fucking, uh, you know, when, uh, you know, you got that little Voldemort's goose out there hitting the air, that bat. So that was tough. I remember trying to, you know, be really, a, you know, I was young and I was trying to really enjoy this girl. But, you know, my, you know, we were doing body time a little bit, you know, a lot of close range. And that bat. So anyway, I have a special place in my heart for Maine. And Maine, they can't, everybody out there is insane. It's crazy. Everybody out there is fucking crazy, dog. Maine is crazy, man. We got some lobsters. We went in uh, the late. I was like, how's the lobster? She's like, it was swimming out there yesterday. And she literally pointed to the water. So that's God, baby. That's God, dude. That's God's sink up there, Maine. So there we are. I'll tell you this, man. Uh, we'll get into some more. Thank you guys for being here today. I'm going to let you know that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. And when I heard it, I said, well, where's the catch? This seemed fictional. Well, after speaking with them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only by cutting out retail stores. That's what they do. So I know it's tough to realize that that's where we are in the world, but that's where we are. We don't need the store sometimes. You can just get the product. Yep, for people looking to, for extra savings, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless, just 15 bucks a month. All plans come unlimited talk and text on the nation's largest 5G network. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, and to get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash Theo. That's mintmobile.com slash T-H-E-O. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Theo. Oh, you know, I, I, I'll tell you this. My testosterone, it gets a little dicey. If I'm in traffic, that shit is hot. You could, you know. My kettle is rocking, baby. I got some steam coming off of me. You could hear that whistle. You could hear that whistle in my missile, baby. But a lot of guys have started using replacement testosterone replacement therapy. That is true. If you're experiencing symptoms like low energy or fatigue, erectile dysfunction, yep, low sex drive or libido, anxiety, brain fog, uh, enlarged breast tissue, bloating, headaches. Jesus Christ, who is this guy? Um, I'm excited to share today's sponsor with you. It's Let's Get Checked. That's right. Let's Get Checked is the leader in at-home testing. Yep, that's right. Simply go to their site, order the male hormone advanced testing kit. It arrives in a small discreet package. Do a small finger prick. Send the sample back to their lab, and it arrives at your door. Uh, back to their lab with prepaid shipping label. In two to five days, you get your results. Let's get checked. Male hormone advanced test. The perfect kit to get a comprehensive look at your male hormone levels. Know your levels. Always important. It's fast, affordable, convenient, and totally confidential. Use code T-H-E-O for 30% off your entire order at try lgc.com slash theo that's lgc stands for let's get checked try lgc.com slash t-h-e-o that is code theo for 30 percent off your entire order 
at trylgc.com slash Theo. If you want to know what's going on with your levels, if you think something's going on, at least now you can know. How you holding up, Riley? Doing great. Yeah? <clears throat> what are you getting for Christmas? You asking Santa for anything or anybody or your somebody? Parents? Um, yeah, asking for a girlfriend. Fuck, really, man? Yeah. Are you joking with me? Or you really want a no. girl? Yeah. Wow. Bub. Damn. Now, do, are you worried that if you if a, if a girl come along, you could just, she might not even, what you know, you're just going to take, you know, sometimes somebody serve you something and you don't know what's in the kitchen because you haven't really had a, had a snack. Right. Are you worried about that at all? Not really. And how quick can you get from first date to marriage, do you think, in y'all's religion? Mm, not sure. There you go. Damn. Well, you never know, boy. Damn. You willing to get there, though? Yeah, definitely. Say you meet a girl, she seems great. How quick would you be willing to get to marriage? Four, five, six months. Amen, boy. Amen, dude. You better sell ticket. You better sell a live stream when you get that stream live, baby. You better sell. You know what I'm saying? You better definitely sell a eight buck tickets. I'll sell it to it. I know a couple dudes out in L.A. A couple of uh, executive producers that would definitely pay to see some of that action. All right, let's get into a couple more calls here. Um, here we go. Hi, Theo. It's Ava from Maryland. Um, I'm calling because I just got home. What's up, Ava? From Maryland, baby. Let's go. Um, I'm calling because I just got home from your show. You were just performing in Baltimore, and it was awesome. I um... Thank you. Thank you. That's sweet of you to say it. Uh, some of them run together a little bit, but not always. Um... um... I think it was a pretty big venue in Baltimore. So thank you for coming out. I bought two tickets initially because I was going to go with my boyfriend, but we're not together anymore. So I couldn't find anyone to go with me. So I just went by myself and I felt kind of uncomfortable. Um, and then once you got on stage, you know, it was just the energy in the room was just, it was just so full of love, you know, and I didn't even notice, you know, that I was there by myself anymore. Um, it sounds kind of lame, but you were awesome. You were great. We loved you. Um, come back soon, please. We all want to buy tickets. Oh, gang, baby, thank you. Thanks for the nice words, and thanks for being brave enough to go somewhere by yourself. You know, we're all by ourselves in a way in the world. Well, you know, we have, you have, but you're all, there's this, you know, the main frame is in us. You know, we see out of our own eyes. You know, we have our own perceptions. So in a way, we're always kind of all by ourselves. But I, I can imagine, yeah, I get, if I got to go eat something by myself, I'm like, I'll pull the waiter over. I'll say, bring the appetizer fast. Don't leave me sitting here doing nothing. I'll tell them, I'll tell them straight up. Dude, Riley, there's a lady right there. I know. And why, I mean, are you, how, how do we, you know, are you missing these babes, man? We got to get you out to a beach or something, maybe where the babes are. Yeah, I'm down. Um, but thanks for coming, Ava. Thanks for coming in there solo. I'm glad there's, you know, there's a lot of love in these audiences. I agree. You know, I constantly hear from people. It's like the best group. Um, you get some free birds, you get people crazies as well, but a lot of love out there. And, uh. I just think it's so sweet that even that you you decided to come even though, you know, your man bailed out. He missed out. That's what I say, that he missed out. But you didn't, gang, baby. Um, What else do we got here? Uh, I feel like that's a lot of stuff so far. What else? Oh, they have some new merch available. We got a new bait, a, a new like uh, fish in and outdoor kind of line that is available. So you can check that out at theovonstore.com. Um, well, let me see what it says. Because 
Uh, new get that hitter bait and tackle collections available. Black Friday sale going on now through Monday, November 29th at 9 p.m. 20% off all be good to yourself and get that hitter merch, gang. Also, the new I'm Upstairs collection is available. Uh, so, new designer tees, long sleeves, and hoodies. Yeah, a lot of neat, a lot of nice Christmas gift options. Um, also, if you are a Patreon member, we have low Patreon, but if you are a Patreon member, you get, you'll get early access for ticketing and uh, you get discount codes uh, for merch. So, just letting you know, because we don't do a big Patreon over here. Um, you know, we do a lot of just, a um, money for single moms and, and that sort of, uh, deal. What else? Uh, what else happened on the tour? Let me think about that. Uh, we almost went to the OSU game, but it was getting cold and we'd had a long couple of days, you know, cause by the time you get to a place, you get going, it's noon. Um, uh, Oh, Burlington. Oh, this happened in a f couple spots. People have to wear the uh, mask now in some theaters. And I didn't know it. So in Burlington's, man, I'm out there. I'm, I'm, I'm giving it my all. And I'm like, man, I don't, the response, I'm not feeling some of the response. And then halfway through, I realized... These people are wearing masks. I didn't even realize it. And um, and that kind of became a theme in a, in a couple of the places we were. You know, the theaters would ask them to wear a mask. Some people would, some people wouldn't. Uh, which is fine. I, You know, do you. You know, if you want to have a mask, I'll have it on. Um. I felt like, but the requirement of it, that was a little bit, that was, that was tough because some places they would make you, or they would come and say something to you. So I just want to say thank you to everybody who's putting up with that kind of stuff. I know it's not easy, um, you know, just dealing with that sort of thing. So, uh, I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. I don't want to look past that. I want to say thank you. Yeah, because some people bought tickets and then they realized they have the the theaters put in these mandates. And Andrew Schultz just said, fuck you to a theater and went to another place. And um, and I love that. And and I would do that, too. I think, uh, you know, I got to get a better. I Oh, he went not because of mandates. He went because. They said he had offensive material. They didn't want his type of material or they gave him some notes. And good. Fuck them. Fuck them people. Uh, the pe People should be able to pay to go see what they want. I then also believe people should be able to go to a place where they know people are going to be masked or not masked. I mean, this shit's almost ridiculous now. Most people have forgotten they even cared about COVID. That's the crazy part. I have friends like eight months ago that were like, you know, that maybe didn't have some of the same thoughts I did about it. And now they forgot about it. They wouldn't even be around, you know, and now they forgot it. So it's like, I think a lot of that stuff is, I think a lot of that's kind of dissipating. You know, when I look back on certain things that had my energy or that were making me upset, it's like, you know, you read articles now about like, uh, BLM found, you know, uh, Guys still fighting for BLM, like in parks and stuff. It's like, wh what? The people that came and the, that money sailed. The the t-shirt vendor for that, he showed up. He's gone now. You know, it's all these little things come that get our attention, get our money. They get your money. They got you could donate his seventy dollars to some damn to a, a black arts foundation and that that guy got busted or whatever. And I'm not saying it's just a black. I'm not saying just black thing. It could be anything. It could be a damn uh you know Norwegian um you know orange company, and you out there eating all these oranges for these bitches on a Saturday, getting vitamin C'd up, and next thing you know they leave town. They don't even they don't give a damn. They you know. Vitamin C, you later. These bitches out. All they was in town to get the get the cash, 
And you, for, but we forget about it. Thankfully, we forget about those things too. Can you imagine if the stresses we had just stayed in us forever? Well, that would be me. Um, anyway, I don't really know what I'm talking about. Uh, we had some uh, in the last episode. We had. Um, I gotta pee, guys. I'm gonna be right back. What else is going on? Let's get into a couple more calls, man. Not to be call heavy, but I just haven't gotten to spend time with you guys in a while. And so I like to hear what's going on uh, from your end. What were the other shows like on the tour? Let me think. Um, oh, in Albany, man, we got to be in this building called The Egg. So the bus pulls in at night. I, you know, you don't know. So we go up in the elevator. We're downstairs. And suddenly I'm upstairs. <laughs> what do you need? Honey, can you? I'm upstairs. I'm upstairs. God, I love it. Ah. Uh, so, oh shit, what was I talking about? What was I talking about, Riley? The downstairs on tour. Oh, yeah, so we got stuck in the, uh, there we go, dude, yeah. Hell yeah, finally, Riley Mao. Uh, you know, you hold out hope that a guy's gonna, there's gonna be something in him. For as much as that's trapped in this dude, you'd think some information would be stuck in there. Times have changed, okay? Species are different. People are different. Um, This theater dude in the uh, Albany dog, this shit. It shot me. The thing, it looked like a, uh, it looked like a bowl of like low main or something. I don't know what the hell. Look, we got images. If you're on YouTube, man, we got images. You will be shocked that there is a building that looks like this in America. You'll be shocked. I had no, and we were inside it. So someone tagged me on the gram in the story and said, hey, is this where you are? And I'm like, shit, I guess so. I guess so, dude. And that's where we are at as humans. We don't even I don't even know what building I'm in. I just know that I'm upstairs. God, what do you want? Um so that was wild. Oh, walking down the streets of Albany, dog. That shit. I didn't know Albany was in it. I didn't know about it. You know, if somebody said, you know, hey, Albany, I'd say, eh, what are you saying, guy? What are you saying? Could you draw a picture of Albany, New York? I don't think I can. And uh, so that's what I'm saying here is that I didn't know. And then we walked down the streets afterwards and it's like all these blustery leaves blowing and big leaves, those big ones, you know. All winterized, they're browned out, you know. These things are all BLM'd out, these leaves. And they're on the ground just like, just like map, like ancient maps. You know, they look like a map from like a different civilization, from like a different galaxy or civilizations. And so, you know, it was beautiful though. It's beautiful, it's it's unique. Uh, some dude outside, some dude said, hey, I'll give you 40 bucks. He said, hey, give me 40 bucks and I won't beat the shit out of you. And I was like, all right. I'll do that, dude. I got that same deal over in Delaware, son. I've seen this deal. So that's a, you know, that's that safety tariff, baby. I paid that bitch straight up, son. That's that safety tariff. Um, if you ever finally did get to ejaculate Riley Mal, would you keep it or you'd let it go? Uh, I'll let it go. Oh, man. You'll wish you had it later. I know it. I always wish I had mine. So just a, just a side note and nobody has to know you keep it. Right. But, um... What I'm trying to think of anything else. I mean, it was all great coming out on the stage, seeing everybody's hyped up. In Buffalo, we got to go see the Bills Stadium. My boy Harrison Phillips over there plays football over there. He's a football guy, and he plays number 99s. 
And I uh, got to go in the locker room, man. Got to see AJ Klein's locker and um, who else? Uh, tr uh, uh, Diggs, Mr. Diggs' locker and um, Josh Allen's. Um, you know, we got to be in there and look and touch like the medical tape and stuff. And then we went out to the field. There was a high school game going on, some children playing, you know. And, uh, you know, Joey Diaz would have sprinkled a little bit half an eight ball out there. But whatever, dude. That's a different guy, different time. But, um, but that oh, here was great. So we're in Buffalo's and we go to the, uh, see the tour of the stadium. And afterwards, we got a car to come pick us up because we don't have a car. That's the thing about the bus. If you were in the bus, the driver's gone all day. He's asleep somewhere. He's at a Holiday Inn Select or at like at a Hampton Inn, which is where I hope to be buried at. You know that. And uh, what happened? What was I talking about, Riley? Do you remember it? Uh, the bus driver, Hampton Inn. Before that. Oh, the Bills Stadium. So we get in the car to leave. It's dark now. We start driving about 10 feet. And the driver, you just hear him go, gang, gang. And we're like, oh, shit. So we were so hyped, man. This guy, he had a crazy story. He told us all this wild story about drugs and youth pastoring and all kind of shit, you know. Some real total gang, gang, gang shit, you know what I'm saying? What kind of stuff you hear on here? So it was really, but it was crazy. We're just sitting there in the dark and we're just heading back and we got to, you know, the show starts in an hour and 20 minutes and then you just hear gang, gang. And he said that him and his wife were going to the show that night. And uh, and they were going to go to dinner first. But this call came in and he took it because he's just doing work. And and next thing you know, he's picking us up. And he's like, it's just kind of wild, you know. So he took us to get some wings and then dropped us off. And we got to meet him and his lady, Leah, I think was his wife's name, after the show for a bit and say hey. And, uh, and that was cool, man. Just the people you meet. Um, and you know we didn't put a meet and greet on the tour because it was uh, I've just been stressed it's been hard to know what your stress level is going to be and so it just have to take it I try to do it when I can so if some places I didn't get to meet some of you I'm sorry you know uh, and we'll try next time um, and in other places sometimes I'm just feeling okay uh but I got to have something in my cup, you know, because otherwise I'm just getting out there and we all, you know, and then I'm not myself and I don't want to be not myself. I'm tired of that. I can't be it anymore. I'm tired of it. Uh, All right, let's get one more call or two. That let's get one more that came in, man. We had some stuff about uh, hearing compliments and stuff and we'll get into it next time. Uh, I want everybody to go enjoy their Thanksgiving, enjoy their Thanksgiving week. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited just to, yeah, I got some family I'm going to see and I'm looking forward to that. Here we go, man. Here's a call that came in. Hey, what's up, Theo? Um, I'm giving you a call is, uh, I just, I'm downstairs, man. I just got a lot going on in my life. Mm -hmm. I kind of just don't feel like I have anybody else to talk to right now. Um, it's just hard. I, uh, I've been there, baby. I've been there, man. Thank you for sharing. Onward. We got some bad news about my mother-in-law. She's got stage four inoperable cancer. And, uh, you know, my wife and I have a wife and two small kids. I work full time. I'm doing grad school at night, and uh, I don't know. It just feels like things are falling apart for me lately. I'm trying to find joy and not let anybody take my joy, but it's hard. It's hard right now, man. Uh, you know, like my marriage is situation kind of coming between our marriage because it's hard. I don't, I don't know how to be the best. 
to everybody. Just be strong, you know. It's hard, man. I I wanna I just wanna hug. <laughs> hug would be nice. Mm. But I I thank you for your podcast, man. It helps. Sorry. No, nah, don't be sorry, dog. I just wanted to say thank you. I'm just being. It's a, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a bright spot in my life, and I'm thankful for that. And that brings me joy. Thank you, brother. Gang, man, thank you, bro. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for sharing what's going on with you and just in a real way. Um, you know, I was crying somewhere yesterday at a Starbucks. So I'm damn crying at a damn Starbucks, you know. And here was the crazy part. I'll tell you this. This is a true story. I'm not trying to laugh. I'm just, but... <laughs> I literally had been crying at a in my truck in a Starbucks, dude. Right? <laughs> so look, some guy dry. He's in traffic on the road out in front of me, and he's like, he's like, "What up, mother?" He starts like flipping. He's like, "Motherfucker!" He's just flipping me off. And then once I see, he gets my attention, he's like, "Gang, gang!" You just, but I'm just like, <laughs> little did he know I'd been sitting there freaking, you know. Just letting all these fucking ghosts outside, you know, you know, the ghosts inside of us, whatever they are, they turn into water and come out of our face, you know. Um, and I don't know if I should even keep that call. I don't know. Maybe we'll keep this call in. I don't want to be uh, disrespectful to you by putting your feelings out there. Um. But it's a lot. Yeah, I think we all feel a lot of pressure. To be everything. It's this never ending thing. And I think it's so sweet that you care about your mother in law. Most people would go to a, they would go somewhere and buy stage four inoperable cancer for the mother in law. You could sell kits of that on Etsy right now. A, a, a lot of it would be women using fake male screen names or email, male emails to buy it for their own mothers. You know, the devil's in the, the devil was out there, man. But you're doing good, man. I'm just here to tell you you're doing good. And, uh, wow, I feel like I'm talking to myself. You notice, don't be so hard. On, man, it's so funny. These are all the things that people tell me. Wow. And I don't even have a family or kids or a real job. You know what I'm saying? You out here doing real stuff, man. You on the front lines, baby. You getting hit by trains, baby. You know, so it's okay, dude. You know, it's okay. And you know why? Because a long time ago, men was in, we was in groups and tribes. And if you had a feeling, you would share it with somebody and you had somebody right there to be there with your feeling. And just don't be afraid to lean on the people around you, you know. Just hug your wife a little extra. Hug yourself a little extra. You know, I think you're doing great, man. You sound, if you're brave enough to share what's going on with you, man, damn. That's huge, dog. It's huge. You doing that just lets me know I'm okay. I'm not carrying any shame for being out of a damn Starbucks. I'm out there. You know, putting extra salt water in my damn salted caramel bachiati or whatever, dude. These bitches or whatever. I don't know. But, sorry I'm not much help right there. Uh, but, you doing good, man. You're doing things I'm afraid to do. Have a family. Have a wife. You're giving me strength. You know, and they need to get a damn hug machine at the CBS, dog. That's what they need, huh? You might ask it on a date, huh, Riley? If it was... Yeah. 
There you go. But they should have, how the CBS don't have a damn hug machine at it? They got a red box for one dollar. You can somebody can come up behind you and mug you. That's all red box is. You you get up there, you put a dollar in, and somebody jack your ass from the back. And now you sitting there. You got a copy of damn. You wake up, you know, two towns over, and you being sex trafficked or whatever. But you got a copy of uh of uh Home Alone three in your you know stuck in your pants in your pocket. It's just. But they need a hug machine at the CVS, dog. And when I see you, I'm going to give you one. And just thank you for, you know, just sharing your truth, bro. And sharing what's going on. And I'm sure, look, you hear this voicemail. You probably left this voicemail a week ago. And you're in a better place now. Uh, but we'll all be thinking about, you know, your mother-in-law and, and just uh, giving you the strength, man. What do you do, Riley, when somebody doesn't have strength? What do y'all do over at the church? What do y'all do? Uh, I just pray over them. And do you have to physically be over them like a fire? Or you can do it like uh, over Zoom or both, just both. Uh, over anyway. Yeah. And you mm-hmm. could just do it by yourself right now if you wanted, huh? Right. You just think about them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be thinking about you, dog. I'll tell you that. Shit. Half a million people listen to this show. There's half a million people have <laughs> been thinking about you while this shit's going on. <laughs> But maybe that might make you feel more uncomfortable if I told you that many people. But it's so funny. I feel like I'm sitting there listening to myself for a second. So thank you for sharing. Thank everybody that's come out to the shows, man, and been a part of my life. uh, And let me be a part of your life. You know, there's so often I can't love myself. and, uh, And you guys love me. And it's crazy. You know, it's just that that's what we do for each other, I think. We just love each other until we can love ourselves. Gang, gang on that. (sighs) You know what? I'm going to go out a good way, man. It's an old-fashioned way. It's the way how we all got in some of this. Um... Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Tell them, Riley. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm just sitting on your front porch Wondering how could I be so far from my home Thanks for being here with me today, Ryan. Thank you, Theo. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Thank you to Spencer Leotow for uh, producing and editing this episode. Thank you to Colin Reiner. I'm just floating on the breeze for producing this episode. Thank you to you, wherever you are. Like a runaway train, like a train. Run it back, baby. Come on. And these rails that I've been riding on, they want so thin that they're damn near gone. I guess now they just weren't built to last. You like this song, Riley? I do. I do. To make sense of what I can, of where I'm going, oh, and where I'm going. Tell you my story. Shine on me, and I will find a song 
will sing it just for you. And I will find the words to help you make it through. If you call my name, I'll sing them to you. Shine that light on me. Come on, Riley Mal. Let it loose, baby. Let's go, Taiwan, baby. Shine on me. And I will find a song. I'll sing it just for you. Life is a salad, baby, and the Lord is my vinaigrette, son. You guys be good to yourselves. Uh, you deserve it. That is um, Shine by Bishop Gunn and the beautiful vocals of Mr. Travis McCready right there. Unprecedented talent in that band, Bishop Gunn. And uh, I'm going to keep them on my thought list. So I hope they can put it back together. I'd love to see them back out there making good music we all would you guys be good to yourselves uh i'm thankful for you gang